Okay, let me catch up here. Okay, so here we go. The very first step, we distribute the negative 5, and we get negative 15x plus 35 minus 2x plus 3 is less than or equal to 7x plus 50. The x's are on the same side. Do the same operation. That gives me negative 17x plus 38 is less than or equal to 7x plus 50. Normally, I would add 17x to both sides, but this time I didn't do that. And this will show you, if you did that, that the answer works out the same. Subtract 7x from both sides, and that it really didn't matter which way you went. That's negative 24x plus 38 is less than or equal to 50. Subtracting 38, negative 24x is less than or equal to 12. Dividing by negative 24, x is less than or equal to negative 1 half. Okay, is negative 1 half a solution to this? Absolutely it is, because it is or equal to at the end. Okay, and number 3, go ahead. All right, minus thing to 5. x over negative 4 is less than 5. Multiplying by negative 4, everything gets negated. The negative 4 side becomes positive x. The sign was less than becomes more than. And 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. Is 20 a solution? No, it is not. Oh, I'm sorry, is negative 20 a solution? No, it is not. Um, because it's not or equal to. 20 is a solution. Anything greater than negative 20 is a solution. All right. Come on. Now, literal equations. These are equations with more than one variable in them, solve or x. If we, this is our last lesson, so I want to review this a little bit before we get going. If I asked you to solve a very simple two-step problem like 3x minus 8 equals 7, go ahead and do it. Okay, adding 8, dividing by 3, x is 5. Very typical, straightforward two-step equation. I'm sure it's not difficult for anybody in the class. But what if I change it slightly and put in a number of variables? In fact, we're going to do a lot of work with this in the coming two lessons, okay? Y equals mx plus b. Solve for x. That means you want it to say x equals. So I subtract b from both sides, and I divide by m, and I get y minus b over m. Last but not least, solve for m. E equals... 1 half mv squared. This is kinetic energy formula. Go ahead. Okay. First, I'm going to multiply by 2 to get rid of that 1 half. That gives me 2e equals mv squared. I want to solve for m. That means get m by itself. So I divide by v squared. And these v squareds would cancel out. 2e over v squared is the correct answer. Okay. Now, let's see you solve each of these for the variable they tell you. Let's solve the first one for t, the second one for v, and the third one for y. Remember, do stop and start. Okay, so on the first one, I want to solve for t. That means make it say t equals. Right now it says txy, so i got to divide by xy. Right? T, X, Y means everything's being multiplied. So the opposite of all multiplication is division. Next up, solve for V. This is a little bit tricky. Okay, if you remember from way back in the day, there's this thing called factoring. Oh, there's the cancellations of the X's and Y's. This thing called factoring, that is when you pull out the v's that they share in common that leaves me with 7 minus a so now i need to divide by 7 minus a and i get v equals m over 7 minus a to me that's a bit of a tricky problem because we really haven't talked much about factoring later on we'll do a lot of work with factoring for now that's kind of asking you to remember something from way back when and i don't know if you remember that okay um, I know that I taught algebra last year, and we did go over factoring. Um, I believe there's one or two students in this class that had me in that class. I just don't know if you remember that. If not, don't sweat it too much. We'll come back to it later in the year. And then the last one. For the last one, it wants us to solve for y. That means get y by itself. And the trickiest thing here is to remember that it's 
the y is a negative 5y. So first I subtract 3x, then I divide by the negative 5. Now, if I just wrote 15 minus 3x over negative 5, that's good, full credit. But we do take multiple choice tests in here. Um, so we need to be prepared for if they express this in another form. And if they do that, they can break the negative 5 apart, giving it to the 15 and the negative 3. 15 divided by negative 5 is negative 3. Negative 3x over negative 5 is 3 fifths x. So that's the other way that it could be written. Now, what I want to do is teach you the only new stuff for today, and that has to do with graphing inequalities, okay? Um, let's talk about how to graph each of these four. So each of them gets a number line. We're graphing on a number line because it's only one variable. And clearly, the number two is important. So in each case, I'm going to circle the two. The difference is this. There are two differences. Do I shade left or right? And do I fill in or keep the circle the way it is? And here's the deal. This says n, or the numbers, are all the numbers that are greater than 2. Remember, inequalities have an infinite number of answers. So I want to find a way to express any number that's greater than 2. But you can't equal 2, right? Because there's no more equal to underneath. So I leave the 2 open. That means you get really, 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 really super close to 2. You get as close as you want, but you can never get to 2 because you're not allowed to equal 2. And then I'm going to shade to the right. Now, when we talked about the greater than symbol and that this is greater than, we said as very long as the variable is on the left, this is the greater, the arrow at the greater end of the number line. So as long as the letter is on the left, and that's why we want to be able to switch sides to get that letter on the left, the arrow or the line will always go in the direction that the inequality points because that's where the inequality comes from. Okay? So next up, n is less than 2. There's your open circle on 2, but this time we shade to the left. Arrow points to the left, inequality points to the left, arrow points to the left, the shading goes to the left. So this is a picture of all the numbers that are less than 2 are all shaded in, but 2 is not. That's why there's an open circle there. And the, the numbers greater than 2 are not, because greater than 2 is not an answer. Now, what's the difference between the, between the question for number 3 and the question for number 1? Well, the only difference is that now it's or equal to, okay? And that means we're going to fill the circle in at 2. Now, a quick little mnemonic device is to say, okay, I'm going to take the extra ink from the or equal to sign and fill in the circle with it. That'll help you remember that. You are allowed to equal 2 in this case, so you can cover the 2. And then arrow to the right, just like before. As long as the letter's on the left, the arrow will point in the same direction as the inequality. And less than or equal to 2, yes, we're going to fill it in, but this time the arrow is going to point to the left. So those are your basic ways to do your graphing inequality solutions. And I'm sure you did a lot of that when you were in public school or, or even private school. But there's another level to this that mathematics really goes after. And that is what we call uh, bracket terminology or uh, bracket notation. And what it is, is if you're not allowed to equal the number, we use a parenthesis. And if you are allowed to equal the number, we use a bracket. Now, remember how, like with numbers 3 and 4, we said that you are allowed to equal it. We call this greater than or equal to, and number 4 is less than or equal to. If you look at the bracket here for number 3, you see how if you take the top and bottom of the bracket, you get the equal sign? But you don't get that with either of the other two, with a parenthesis. So the bracket has the equal sign in it, which reminds you that you're allowed to equal it, okay? So if you see a bracket, you're allowed to equal the 2. It's as if you're filling it in. If you don't see a bracket, you're not allowed to equal it. Now, what about this infinity stuff? This means just that it goes on and on forever and ever and ever, like infinity. However, you're ne you can never equal infinity. Like the minute you think you got to the last number out there, you just add another one or add a half or add, add a billion. It doesn't matter. You can never get to a, a place called infinity. It's more of a concept. So we put a parenthesis there because it's not an exact location number value that you could equal. Um, now, number two, it starts with the numbers all the way out here on the left, and that's negative infinity. So parenthesis, you go from negative infinity, and you go all the way up to two, but you can't quite equal two. That's why it's a parenthesis. 
for a number three, you are allowed to equal two. So I'm going to use a bracket. And I'm going to go toward infinity and keep going forever and ever and ever. I know I'll never get there, but that's where I'll go. And number four, I'm going to start at negative infinity. And I'm going to go all the way up to two. And I am allowed to equal it, so there's a bracket there. Okay? All right. So what I want to do now is I want to draw a number line graph for each of these. So for instance, for letter A, okay, I don't know why it's why I'm getting the wheel of death here. Hopefully this stops momentarily. Okay, so uh, what I did was I drew out for you the number lines for each. And I put what I would call the significant number, 5 to negative 16. I would like you to draw the graph for each one. Go ahead. Do all six. Actually, do just the first three across the top. I'll show you the answers, then we'll do the bottom three. So do just the first three off the top. Okay. N is less than five, open circle on five, arrow to the left. N is greater than or equal to two, closed circle on two, arrow to the right. X is greater than negative 16, open circle on negative 16, arrow to the right. Now you try the next three. Again, this is the slide we did before. I told you we were coming back to it. So now you're just adding the graph in at the end. Go ahead. Okay. Number one, open circle at negative two, arrow to the right. Number two, closed circle at negative two, arrow to the left. Number three, open circle at negative 20, arrow to the right. Now, go a little further. This is called corresponding set builder notation. In this case, the x could be less than 3, or, or because they go in opposite directions, arrow to the right now, x is greater than or equal to 6. Notice the 6 is filled in. So here's how I would use set builder notation. The bracket on the left, x such that, x is less than 3, or x is greater than or equal to 6. Anytime the arrows go in opposite directions, you can't be both at the same time. You can't be less than 3 and greater than or equal to 6. So it has to be an or statement when they go in opposite directions like that. Now, if I wanted to express this with bracket notation, I have two things to express. First, the one on the left, then the one on the right. And that would look like this. From negative infinity to 3, and I use parentheses for both. I always use a parenthesis when it involves infinity, positive or negative. And I'm not allowed to equal the 3, so I have to use a parenthesis. I am allowed to equal the 6, so I use a bracket. Remember, the top and bottom of the bracket are the equal signs. And then I can go on to infinity, so there's the parenthesis. All right. A few more examples, just to show you it. Here, closed in circle. So I have a bracket, goes to the right, to infinity, parenthesis. Here, open circle, so parenthesis at three. Again, going on to infinity, parenthesis. Less than or equal to six, notice the filled in circle, notice the bracket. So I go from negative infinity, which I can never equal, to six, which I can equal because it's filled in, and there's a bracket on there in the top and the bottom of the bracket make an equal sign, so easy to remember. And the last one is x is less than 6. So that would be from negative infinity all the way out to 6. Okay? All right. Notice you can't equal the 6, so it's a parenthesis. All right, so here are some more examples. Here's from 5 to infinity. Notice it's an open circle at 5, parenthesis. Filled in, bracket. Open circle, parenthesis. Filled in, bracket. Open, open means parenthesis, parenthesis. And my bounded interval here goes from 1 to 5. Same, look at over here, right on the left-hand side. You're not allowed to equal on the left? Open circles. Here you are allowed to equal on the left, so it's filled in, but you're not allowed on the right, so it's open. And then when I give the interval here, 
it's a bracket because you are allowed to equal it, then a parenthesis. Next up, one to five. The one is open, the five is filled in or closed. Parenthesis, bracket. Double brackets because they're both or equal to. Fill in both of those circles. Bracket, bracket. The one and the five doesn't make a difference. You just use them in the problem. But the way you do this doesn't change whether it's a one and a five or a hundred and five hundred. Next up, notice the or statement. With or, we use a union symbol. Okay, so you could be from negative infinity all the way up to one, but you're not allowed to equal it, right? Because there's no or equal to sign underneath. So it's a parenthesis. And here you begin on five, so it's a parenthesis, all the way up to infinity. Okay. Next up, x is less than or equal to one. Okay. Here's your symbol for one. It's or equal to, so it's filled in, and there's a corresponding bracket here. Remember, infinities always have parentheses. Greater than five, there's no or equal to there, so it's an open circle, parentheses. Infinities always have parentheses. In case you didn't catch on to that, infinities always have parentheses. Here's another or statement. Notice the union for bracket notation. You're less than one, or you're greater than or equal to five. The one is strictly less than, so it gets a parenthesis. The five gets a bracket. Less than or equal to one, greater than or equal to five, that's double filled in circles, double brackets. Don't forget your union symbol. Okay, so now what I want you to do is draw out, you're gonna do two things. You're gonna draw the graph of each and then write it in symbols like you had over here. So notice parenthesis, parenthesis. So open circle, open circle. And then here when I write it, X such that, that's all the beginning means and I don't put equal signs underneath. It's a bounded interval from A to B, right? If they spread in opposite directions, that's when I use a union symbol, an OR. But this is not that way. It's a bounded interval. See here? Look at the picture. Bounded interval. Picture. Bounded interval. So go ahead, try the next one here from parenthesis A to um, bracket B. You a quick little sketch. Doesn't need to be a work of art. Okay, so it's an open circle on A because it's a parenthesis. It's a closed circle on B, fill in that dot. A to B, it is allowed to equal to B. It's a bounded interval, it is allowed to equal to B, so you see that, or equal to under the B, but not under the A. Okay. Let's see you try the next two. Go ahead. Okay. Of course, you're doing stop and start. I don't have to tell you that anymore. Next, filled in circle at A, open circle at B, bracket at A, parenthesis at B, and then A is less than or equal to X, which is less than B. Since this was filled in, I put an or equal to. Since this was open, I do not. For the next one, double brackets means they're both filled in, and they both get or equal to's. Okay, I think you can do the next one. Give it a shot. So it goes from A to infinity. You're not allowed to equal the A. So it's an open circle on A, arrow to infinity. X is greater than A. No or equal to underneath because it's an open circle. Try the next one. Okay. So the arrow goes to the left, which means I start at negative infinity. I know it looks like the arrow is going in that direction, but think of it as we always have to work left to right. So that's why it's, in, when you use bracket notation, that's why it says negative infinity out to B. You're not allowed to equal B because it's a parenthesis, so it's an open circle and strictly less than symbol. Okay, try the next three. Go ahead.
Okay, so here, build in circle on A, arrow to the right. Notice greater than or equal to, and notice the bracket. Next one, the bracket's on the B, but we start to the left. So, build it into the B, fill in that circle, less than or equal to, bracket. And last but not least, a little bit tricky, it's the whole number line, right? There's no number in between. You're just going from negative infinity to positive infinity. And it just keeps going and going and going forever and ever and ever. So that's bracket notation. The happy recap for today. First thing to consider, same side, same operation, opposite side, opposite operation. Recognize it, do it at the right time. You're like part Colombo, part Peyton Manning. Next up, when you multiply or divide by a negative, make sure you switch the direction of the inequality. Don't forget to do that. When solving a literal equation, manipulate uh, manipulate it to say whatever letter they're looking for equals. So for instance, if they say solve for M, you want to say M equals. If they say solve for X, you want to say X equals. And number four, brackets are for when things are equal, parentheses are when they're strictly greater than or less than. All right, that's the end of lesson number five.